May we join together to embrace life, the beauty, and the pain, to comprehend the magnitude of this act of violence. Leave here with a renewed sense of peace, of hope and serenity, and celebrate humanity's ability to be selfless, courageous, and compassionate. Changed forever. I am changed forever. We are forever changed. It is the dead of winter in Oklahoma. While snow blankets the Oklahoma City National Memorial, inside the museum. All the objects that we have here and documents um, help tell the story. These college students uncover history. Some of the victims' personal items. They are University of Central Oklahoma students, theater, music, and dance majors, selected to be involved in a special project, tell the story of the Oklahoma City bombing. It was like the very first thing in the box, and I just read it, and I was like, my mind was blown. Yeah. I just want to mark all of it down yeah, this copy. Yeah, right away. Hey, teach for theater. <laughs> Haley Thompson, a theater communication professor, heads up the project. You know, if my students are 18, that means they were three when this happened, between the ages of three and seven here. And I wondered what they had remembered. If these students don't know the stories, then they're forgetting, you know, and that's not a good thing. I want, I want to change that. Change that for people. Were they upstairs? Or like Alana Murray. When the Oklahoma City bombing happened, um, I was five years old, and I don't remember a thing from it. It was worlds away. <laughs> I thought it would be, if not anything else, just an amazing experience. I didn't know what kind of experience. It's an interdisciplinary experience that Thompson designed to trigger creative and critical thinking skills among the students. Yeah. It's very touching. It is. The project begins with research. The students dig through the archives at the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Museum. Through the artifacts, they learn about the victims, survivors, and their families. They are copying materials, prose, poetry, um, interviews. Uh, they're looking at artwork so that they can understand other people's interpretation of their feelings and what they've been through. They were taking time to really let everything soak in and really get the right amount of information. What, where we were before this all happened and where we are today. I'm just overwhelmed. Like, I don't even know where to start looking, you know? I don't know what direction we want to go in either. I wish we could talk before and someone would be like, I want to do something about a couple or I want to split it into three parts. Uh, do you want to focus on the before, like, the piece before the storm, the actual storm, or do you want to focus on the, like, three parts of this country? Okay, so we're going to brainstorm for just a minute. Days after exploring the archives, the group meets again. What do you want the audience to leave with? Haley Thompson poses questions. Change. They should feel change just okay. from everything they're experiencing and everything that happened. They must craft a script, but first, the students must agree on a mission statement. You're going to come up with a sentence that you think embodies what we're trying to accomplish here. Okay. We began thinking about it and reflecting and we first started thinking how upset we were about it and how we couldn't believe that some person could decide to do this and we, we figured out we were on the wrong track. That's, that's not what we should have been reflecting on, not reflect on all the pain, all the suffering, but reflect more on what it's turned into and the joy that Oklahoma City now has as a state. A sentence really hit me that was changed forever, forever changing because it's not over. I mean, the bombing happened, it's over but we're still forever changing within time and with everything that we have in front of us. At about week six, we are starting to actually have a script, which is a big relief for everybody. The script uses passages from letters and journals written by survivors and victims' family members. I don't hear any noise, but I can feel the, the force of air carrying me. Each actor helps weave the story of the Oklahoma City bombing. Scared and frozen in disbelief. It looks like all the elements of someone's everyday life run through a blender. 
I still get chills when I recall the sound. At 9.02, I thought I was dead. No, wait, I was alive. What happened? Where is this black smoke coming from? What was that rumbling sound? Where did this four feet of rubble come from? Where is the door? I mean, wasn't there a wall here? I parked my car, grabbed my first aid kit from the trunk with, with both hands, and I ran the rest of the way. At first, I didn't, I didn't notice from here all the damage to the federal building or the other buildings in the area. Not until I crossed the street. The performance is a challenge. The content is heavy. It blends both acting, music theater, and dancing. Do you guys have a 903 dance? Is that what you guys are? Yeah. 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 And then let me see where you guys are, because that's kind of where we are. Okay. The first month, I would have to say, was very trying, because the students weren't used to each other's work styles or art types, and all of us think differently. You've got all these different types of artists and they all have an idea of what they think this needs to look like. I think also they were expecting me just to give them a script. Just give me a script. I don't know how many times I heard them say, just give me, tell me what we're doing. And that's not what the process was about. The process was about them creating what they felt needed to happen based off that mission statement. For Timothy Burgess, the mission statement, Change Forever, resonates in this music. He composed original music for the project. Angela Lansdowne and Lindley Baker wrote the lyrics. I know for me, I'm so used to getting a script or getting a score, and that's what you sing. And there you go. You've got all the instructions laid out in front of you. And with this, it was, uh, we, were, we just had so much freedom to be creative that it was almost overwhelming was really at different. first. This was an original composure called The Things We Hang on Fences. It's inspired by the idea of beauty and simplicity and the small things that people have taken to the memorial and hung on the fences there. It's the idea of the gestures and the kindness that people have in just giving those gifts and hanging those things and saying, you know, we will always remember. On this day, some of the students visit the memorial grounds to remember. The loss of anyone is something that anyone can identify with. And so just because we were so little and this happens, we're familiar with loss the same way. So when I came the first time, you know, there was sadness, but you didn't feel connected to it. And now when I go back and I look at these and I read these stories and I see these names, I really think about who they were and the stories behind them and the loved ones they left. You can almost feel as if the spirits are there around you. So it's really, it's really touching. The spirit of a young woman is the part that Alana Murray portrays in the production. And it terrifies me because there are times in the middle of the night where I wake up and it's like you're right there next to me. It's like you're whispering something in my ear, but I don't know what you're saying. I, I walk around the house. I can smell you. It's always the same. It's always you. I represent the spirit of the person that is gone. And the yearning to, the feeling that they're still there, just so close to you that they can't quite touch you, but you know that they're there. And I am, I'm the representation of that spirit. Really spiritual, almost. They're, I felt guided by my with my movements and guided throughout the thing um i i felt good about portraying um the pain the people and portraying the wife for everybody to breathe at the same rate haley thompson believes this breathing exercise will help bond the actors and dancers and then once when the breath is the same we will start at the very beginning with horror, shock, fear, worry. So songs. we're belly breathing? Everybody has to breathe at the same time. Belly. Actors, you better build your lines and listen to each other. The goal is that they are listening and feeling that other person's breath. Having them breathing at the same time and knowing that they're breathing at the same time. And then we'd throw 
another little wrench in there in that somebody would have to say a line and so they had to listen to that line, know when their next line is, and still be breathing at the same rate as everybody else. So it made them just really pay a little bit more attention to how the other people are connected in this performance. The 14 students have developed a strong connection to each other and the roles they play. And I knew that this child of mine would see better and, and brighter days. And then the moment left me and my heart began to race. Somehow I knew that this beautiful child of mine had been lost. They deliver a powerful first performance in front of an audience at the Pegasus Theater. She has been gone for one year, nine months and 20 days. I find that I love her more now than ever. I see her every day in the face of a 10-year-old boy. and He somehow keeps me close to her. And I, I hope and I try to do the same for him. Mason Payne feels an even deeper connection to the part he plays after meeting some of the victims and their families. He portrays Lyle Cousins, whose wife died in the bombing. I, know, I was thinking about this, this day and what it would be like to meet, uh, to meet you, and, and one of the main things that I wanted to say was, was thank you very much for sharing your story because um, the way that you handled that situation with, you know, so much faith uh, has really inspired me to, to live my life Good. in a different light. <clears throat> I've been going through some things when my mom uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer, and this was as we were going through this play, and some of the things you said about your faith. and After you go through something like this, you really have a lot more insight to help people, and you want people to understand what happened, why it happened, and how people handle it. I mean, that's, and, and that's probably the biggest, most important thing, is looking at the people that made it through. And it's great to see that, that uh, you know, people can use your story um, to get them through something. The production has transformed these young lives. The students who were once strangers now confide in each other about their hopes and fears about life and death. Like, there's a part where that you talk about losing their, your wife. Well, right now my best friend's mom is dying, and sh her son is my best friend. So every time I hear it, I, it's just reliving the moment. So. All right. Yeah. We've been delving so deeply into lives that don't belong to us, but belong to our community, and lives that stories that might that might have just laid dormant in the Archives Memorial, and we're putting these people out there and telling them that, you know, how we grew from this, how Oklahoma and the rest of the states and the rest of the world honestly grew from this in some way or another, we're saying we recognize that and we care. Well, um, today's the big day, you know. We're downtown here at um, the corner of Sixth and Robinson, just across the street from the memorial. The students are gathered in downtown Oklahoma City for the final performance held near the memorial grounds. It's been an emotional roller coaster uh, all, all day being down here at the memorial and on the actual location when it happened. Before the program, they unite at the survivor's tree to share a prayer. They find time to reflect alone. Over the past three months, they've been required to keep a journal. Devin Hannaford has grown from the experience he calls a journey. Uh, this has truly been an amazing experience. Uh, never before in my life have I ever been a part of anything that has meant so much to anyone. I have been blessed, um, taught, and changed. And as I look over the waters that flow between 901 and 903, I think about the lessons I've learned, and I know that time will go on and allow me to use these lessons in a positive way. I'm so anxious.
Emotions are high. The students rely on each other to make this final performance a tribute. We're shattered at 9.02 on April 19, 1995. The day the world will remember. The day I wish I could forget. It is a tribute to those who were killed, those who survived, and those changed forever. You know, they say that time heals all wounds, but I have seen some people who are crippled by their wounds. And sometimes we all may feel a little crippled, but we go on because we choose to. We aren't the first to suffer or grieve, and we won't be the last. I think of the future I have with my three and five year old boys and I try to be positive because, because there's still good in the world. We want people to walk away with a sense of hope and knowing that things are going to be great in the future and also that we are noticing how valuable life is and it's a celebration of life and of these people's lives. that basically are sharing their stories so that we can be changed. I am. I am. Changed.